What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So Diablo 4's first season is kicking off very soon, and we have some stuff to talk about. That way you can maximize your time and hit the ground running when season one comes around. So first, let's talk about what is season one adding and why should you care? So one, we're going to get some new story along with a new friend who needs our help named Cormand. Um, we'll be able to access a new item called a Malignant Heart. These are dropped from malignant enemies, which are powerful elites. They're kind of like souped up um, creatures. Once you kill them, they'll drop a heart and you perform this little ritual and you get a heart item that can be slotted into jewelry for powerful effects. So some of the ones they showed off were like legendary aspect level effects. Now there's some special dungeons out there called malignant tunnels. These will allow you to target farm malignant heart. You can choose what type of malignant heart you get. So it allows us to be a little bit more deterministic on what we are looking for. We have a new boss named Varshan the Consumed. This one apparently is going to challenge players. We don't know too much about him other than a very, very, very fast clip in the gameplay trailer, but apparently he's the new big bad. Now we have a new battle pass and seasonal journey. So this is gonna be our first crack at both of these things. So the battle pass comes in two flavors, premium and free. Premium is going to have a bunch of cosmetics. Free is it's gonna have a bunch of things called ashes, which are used for the new blessing system. The blessing system is gonna grant seasonal boost to gold experience, malignant heart drops, and a few other things. Now the seasonal journey is gonna give you a bunch of objectives to complete. You go complete those objectives, you, then you'll complete chapters. As you complete chapters, you'll get rewards. Things like caches of items, you'll get legendary aspects, cosmetics, whole bunch of other stuff, titles. So if those things are important to you, then make sure to go through and complete that seasonal journey. So what do we wanna do ahead of time to make sure we kind of are best prepared for season one? So one, you wanna make sure you discover the entire map because discovering the entire map is going to be crucial. It gives you a bunch of renown, and that also goes for all of your altars of Lilith. So make sure you discover all of those. If you haven't done that yet, make sure you go do that. Use one of the mini maps online in order to find where all of those are, and just put on some music, run around, click on them. You only have to do it once, but doing those two things is gonna be huge because that's gonna give you a large boost to renown and allow you to start with extra skill points, potion charges, and obble capacity. So being able to go through and have all those things is going to save you a lot of time and it's going to allow you to kind of spec out your character a little bit further than you would if you were just leveling normally. So right now when I start a new character, I think I have nine skill points, something like that. So I'll be able to go through and throw a bunch in there right from the get go. Okay, so those are the things we need to do ahead of time and that's what season one adds. But let's also talk about starter builds. So if you're somebody who's really busy, you don't have a lot of time, you probably haven't kept up with the meta of Diablo 4, and that's okay. So here are one or two starter builds for each class to get you into the game. And then once you get around level 50, you either need to switch to a different build, which there's a lot of end game builds out there, or you can continue with the build you have and just continue building on top of it. Now, before we get into these builds, I did wanna give a little disclaimer. So there is a massive patch coming on July 18th that's going to provide a balance pass on everything in the game. So while we're talking about these builds now, just know these could be tweaked. So what I'm trying to do is avoid the overpowered builds like Bone Spear for the Necromancer, because those ones are most likely gonna get hit by the Nerf Hammer. So these are gonna be safe bets, ones that I think will be relatively okay after the 718 patch. So let's start with Druid first. Druid, I think Tornado Druid or Pulverized Druid are going to be very safe bets. These two are not overly overpowered. They're gonna be able to be very strong in early game. They're gonna scale well into mid game and they're gonna give you a nice starting foundation for when you reach end game. You can either stick with Tornado Druid or Pulverize and continue building on them or you can switch to something like a Storm Wolf or if Shred hasn't been completely destroyed, you could do a Shred Druid. Um, it's really up to you. Right now, I play a Pulverized Druid. I absolutely love it. It's a play style I really, really like, but I leveled as a Landside Druid, and that was okay. It wasn't overly great, but Tornado and Pulverize are going to be strong for you to start with. Next up is the Rogue. We have the Twisting Blade Rogue or the Barrage Rogue. Either one of these, I think, will be perfectly fine. Twisted Blade will probably get a little bit of a nerf, maybe a little step back, but I don't foresee it completely falling off the map. And the Barrage Rogue is kind of the same way. It might get toned down a little bit, but it should be a safe bet regardless. 
Then for the Sorcerer, we have Ice Shards or Chain Lightning. Now, I leveled Chain Lightning. I really liked that play style. The Lightning Sork was a fun one to play, um, especially when you get like Ball Lightning and Ball Lightning Orbit and all that fun stuff. Ice Shards were an incredibly powerful build. It was fun. It just didn't really vibe with me, but I know a lot of people that really like it. Fire isn't in a overly great place right now, so Ice and Chain Lightning are sort of what I would recommend to level with. Um, but as you get into end game, mid game, um, consider jumping either to something else or flexing these into something a little bit more specific. For Barbarian, I just got done leveling my Barb. I went Rend all the way towards end game. It was a interesting play style. The Barbarian was the least fun class for me to level. I just didn't really vibe with any of the play styles. I tried Hoda Barbarian. I tried Rend Barbarian, Upheaval, Whirlwind. And I really just didn't like everything that the Barbarian is. But Rend was the one that I could put up with the longest. And it was also powerful. It's one of those two where I think casual players are really going to enjoy it. Because you just bleed things out. You don't have to do anything crazy. You just build up your Fury Meter. You Rend. You Death Blow whenever you can. And that's, that's it. For the Necro, I'm going with Sever Necro. This was the one that I liked the most. I tried some of the other ones and I wasn't really a huge fan. Now, obviously Bone Spear, for some weird reason, if Blizzard doesn't touch Bone Spear, go Bone Spear. But Sever, I feel like is in a good place. It's not wildly overpowered compared to the other builds, but it's still a very strong starter build. And that's one thing I do want to hammer home again is that these are starter builds. These aren't supposed to be full end game, kind of one to hundred builds. These are designed to get you started, and then once you either get bored or you're ready to transition to more of an end game build, go look those up on Icy Veins or Max Roll and get a nice end game build that you can really vibe with. Okay, so let's talk about some leveling tips really quick. These have been kind of beaten to death, but I still want to go through them just in case you're somebody that's brand new to Diablo. Um, in Diablo 4, make sure to use elixirs. You can go talk to the herbalist, and once you do that, you can craft elixirs. When you craft elixirs, they give you some random bonus. So you could do like iron barb to get thorns. You could do an armor one. But whatever elixir you use, you're also going to get a 5% experience boost for the duration of the elixir. So making sure to keep these up all of the time is going to help you level a little bit quicker. If you have a friend to play with, make sure to group up for an XP bonus. This is, again, something that is fairly basic, but you can forget about it, especially if you play solo all the time. So make sure to group up for those XP bonuses. And the last one, pick a comfortable build or comfortable setup to go with. Games are meant to be fun, so make sure to play something that you really like. If you don't like any of the starter builds that I recommended, don't feel like that's a box that you're confined to. If you really want to play a Blood Surge Necro, go play a Blood Surge Necro. If you want to play an Upheaval Barbarian, play an Upheaval Barbarian. It's whatever you want to play, because again, Diablo is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be this min-max grind where it feels like a job, especially when a new season comes around, because you're going to get burnt out really quick. So play the game for fun. Hopefully this video has helped you understand what's coming with season one, what to do ahead of time, and give you an idea of some good starter builds to kind of kick the whole season off with. For me personally, I don't know what I'm going to play yet. I'm still up in the air. I don't want to play a Druid again, but at the same time, that play style was so incredibly fun that I just, I don't know, I keep getting drawn back in. Maybe I'll play a Rogue. That's the one I've spent the least amount of time on, and I feel like that would be a good fit, but I don't know. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this video in the comments section below. Good luck in season one. And as always, I'll talk to you guys next time.